Hey guys, uh, today I'm going to go over uh, something that seems to be pretty commonly asked about, and that is adding 5 volt and sensor ground to an existing harness, or um, you know maybe building a harness from from scratch. Uh, kind of how to do it. So there's a couple different ways to go about this. Um, the first I'm going to show you is not something that I would recommend, but uh, these a lot of people use these, and um, you know have good results or bad whatever. You run five volt in and then you um, you jump across all of these terminals and now you've got five volt across all of these terminals um, this is uh you know you, you would just run your five volt out of the ecu to a ringlet or ring eyelet terminal and hook it up here and then jump across all of them they make these little bridges for these things i don't have any here because i don't ever use these things um but uh, i pulled this one out of a car and i figured it'd be good to show a demonstration um and then uh <clears throat> this is, you know, not my recommendation, but it, it will work. Uh, the, the next thing people do is they cram a whole bunch of wire into these uh, butt connectors um, and, um, and hope for the best. These things are, they're junk. Um, if it's got a plastic, you know, if there's a plastic uh, insulator on it, there's a good chance that they're crap. Um, and then uh, I'm going to show you the way I, I do it. And, um, you know, hopefully it helps educate some of y'all. I use a what's called a step down butt connector so it might be a little bit hard to see but um, these are they're color coded so the red side here is for a 20 gauge wire in and the blue side here is for a uh, 14 to 16 gauge wire so what I did was I stripped four 20 gauge wires over here twist them together shove them in and then you get your 20 gauge here on this side um, you know shoved in there and what you'll do is you'll crimp them down so uh, the first thing i'm going to say about using any any type of wiring period it doesn't really matter what you're doing um use good tools so uh these are these are good they're you know they're the they're, they're i believe these are klein um but there's a non-insulated port right here and then there's an insulated section here um the <clears throat> I don't have any of the, the cheap ones you get from like AutoZone, you know, that have the color coding for, for these, but um, they're trash. They deflect a lot. They don't actually get a good solid crimp on the wire. And um, the other thing is, is use a good quality, you know, wire stripper. These happen to be um, made for the type of wire that I use, but uh, just don't, just don't buy the cheap, you know, AutoZone, AutoZone special. Um, Klein makes a good wire stripper for standard style wire, two different sizes. Um, you know, just don't, don't use cheap junk for tools and you'll have a better, uh, a better outcome. Um, the other thing that I kind of always like to point out is, um, I like to use these flush cutters when cutting wire, cause it's a heck of a lot easier to get the wire cut straight than it is, uh, you know, using maybe a pair of linesman pliers or a, a big pair of dikes on an angle. These actually cut straight you know they're and they work really really well for cutting zip ties flush so for 10 bucks they're worthwhile having uh so anyway after you've done this and uh these step down butt connectors come in many different sizes and variants so here's another one this is another style this would be a little hard to see but um on this side right there you see the hole is pretty small and that's made for 20 gauge and then on this side is made for uh 16 to 18 I'm sorry, 22 on the other side, 16 to 18 on this side. So uh, what, what it does, you can notice the holes a little bit you know, smaller here and then bigger over here. And then uh, this one is for, I believe this is 10 gauge on this side and um, 14 gauge on this side. So uh, if you've got a, say you have to split a power feed out to injectors, right? So when you're gonna, when you're gonna split up your injectors, um, and maybe you've ran a, uh, a, a 10 gauge on one side and you're going to split it to two 14s. Uh, this is a, this is a good option, right? Um, but one of the most important parts of doing anything like this is to make sure one proper tooling and two, uh, proper sealing. So this is, uh, this stuff's a little bit more expensive than what you'll find on Amazon, but it's, uh, it's worthwhile. Uh, this stuff is made by Raychem. This is a uh, dual wall adhesive lined heat shrink. Um, and what that means is it's, uh, this stuff's actually, you can see it's very, 
it's difficult to squeeze. It takes a good bit of effort to squeeze. Um, that's that's a SCL series, right? So that's um, that's SCL from uh, from Raychem, and then they also have a uh, a little little less uh, rigid um, type of heat shrink, and it's called uh, ATM or ATUM. Uh, this is also adhesive lined, um, but notice it's a lot a lot more pliable, a lot more flexible. So whenever I'm doing a junction inside of a harness, um, I like to use the rigid SCL stuff um, and it, it'll provide a, a strain relief um, across these two sides, okay? So it'll provide you some strain relief from this group of wires here to this group of wires here. So if you pull on these, right, if you're trying to pull this apart, which you shouldn't be yanking on a wiring harness anyway, but, um, that also comes into why I, I, I twist all of them together so that when you when you pull on something, it's not pulling on one wire, it's pulling on the entire bundle and it's a lot stronger when you have a whole bundle. But, um, you know, use a good adhesive lined heat shrink. Uh, uh, the four to one shrink ratios are really nice because it'll be big enough to fit over all four of these, but it'll shrink down small enough to get tight on this single wire. So. I always recommend using like a four to one good dual wall adhesive lined uh, adhesive lined heat shrink, um, but that's that's how I do it. So when you um, when you're coming out of the ECU, you know this is your ECU plug. You'll have one wire coming out, and um, you run it to whatever point you want in the harness, and then cut it to length, <clears throat> and then uh, take. I use white wire here, but like for five volt, it's typically orange. And then for sensor ground, it's typically black, but um, I just used white because it was easier to see on a black background. The um, what, what once you once you cut it the length, now run your stringers basically. So you'll have your your sensor wire, your input from the ECU, is going to run the whole length from from here to wherever your first termination is going to be, and then your your sensor ground and your five volts going to come out of the ECU and it's going to come to this point which is gonna be before you make your breakout to, uh, to all your other sensors. And then you'll break out the appropriate amount of length from this point to the first termination, which would be maybe your bulkhead connector or your, um, you know, your pressure transducers or whatever it may be. So you'll run, you know, just, you'll run one wire here. And typically what I like to do is I like to stagger these in length, right? So if this is gonna be 24 inches from ECU to this point, I'll make the uh, the sensor ground maybe 30 inches, you know, so they're a little bit staggered in length, so you don't have two junctions right next to each other, because that's how make, that's how you wind up making the the loom a larger diameter, right? So, um, so you know, you, you stagger them in length, and then um, you know, provide strain relief with uh, with a good adhesive line heat shrink tubing. So, hopefully, that answered uh, some questions and made made life a little bit easier for for some of y'all that might be. Uh, undergoing a, a wiring project um, over the winter, but uh, that's all I got. Thanks.